And hello there. Well, more expense, boys and girls. More. I've, I've had to pay out so much this month, it's unbelievable, dear. So much. So a little while ago, a few days ago, I went to my fridge, didn't I? I went to my fridge and I thought, I had a funny smell in here. And I looked and I searched high and low. I thought, is there something dead in here? And I thought, nope, I'm not dead in the fridge. I'm standing outside it. I had a good look around, couldn't find a thing. So I went up to the supermarket at the road. And I got one of those non-smelling things what's supposed to absorb the smell in the fridge. Now, I do remember watching a programme, strangely enough, only a few nights before, um, called How Clean Is Your House with Aggie and... Oh, who's the other one? I don't know. But there's these two ladies, um, I think they're over 60, both of them. And what they do is they go around cleaning filthy, dirty people's houses. And some of these houses, you have never seen anything like it, my loves. They are absolutely shocking and disgusting. I mean, I, I've said to you before, my house is not tidy and it's not spotless. If you was to come round here, which you may do one day, we may have a little open day. Eh? Would you like that? You know, like, like um, something like the Queen's Garden Party or something like that. Well, I, I was thinking, oh, sorry, I'm just doing something on the computer while I'm chatting to you. There's something I forgot to bring up. Something of great importance, boys and girls. Great importance because... Oh, we'll come back to that later. We'll come back to that later. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, we, could, we could have like a... gut. I mean, I could have a garden party. The trouble is, if I invite you around here, I don't want you to start rummaging around in my drawers. I mean, it's just rude, isn't it? How would you like it if I came round your house and started rummaging around in your drawer? You wouldn't like it, would you? No, exactly. So I'm a little bit concerned. So what we might do is get you to come through the, uh, the, the, the front door. I'll block off the rest of the house with wooden... Um, uh, what are they called? Those things, those room dividers or something like that, so that you can't get into the main part of the house. Because I know what it is. I, I don't suppose... I, do, I don't suppose for one moment you would try and steal something from here. As such. But I've got a feeling people like Susan, the cat lover, <laughs> would, would want a little memento. Something simple like a plate or a set of knives and forks or, I don't know, a, a, a light bulb from the ceiling. You'd be uh, nicking little bits and pieces like that, wouldn't you? Huh? <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> what else? What other little mementos would you, would you like? I wonder what would you take if you were invited round to someone famous's house? Then... Would you be tempted to take nothing of value, OK? Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying you would, you're a common thief. But would you be tempted to try and get a little, a little souvenir? Maybe a toilet roll or something like that, or a tube of toothpaste, would you? Is that what you'd do? What would you take? That's the question. Tell me on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co. Dot UK. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Back to the story. Uh, so I remember seeing this programme with Kim and Aggie. That's it. Kim and Aggie. How clean is your home? And some of these you have never seen. You've probably got some similar programme on the telly, whatever country, you're, whatever country you're in. But you have never seen so many disgusting, filthy houses in all your life. I mean, it's bad. I told you on the last show about the oven cleaning. Well, I, I consider that pretty filthy. But some of these ovens are thick with grease. And you've got, like, um, sinks full of washing up, dead flies, in, you know, on window sills and things like that. It is just disgusting. But on this particular programme, uh, they looked in this man's fridge. And, and again, it was filthy and dirty and nasty. And they gave it a clean out. But, of course, fridges tend to hold smells, don't they? And uh, the advice that she gave uh, this bloke was to go and get, you know, those one, one use, single use barbecue things that you can buy in the summer. And it's like a silver thing and it's just full of charcoal. 
she advised this bloke to get one of those and just put it in the bottom of the fridge and all the smells will be absor absolved. No, that, no, that's, that's, absor that, that's, that's been absolved for sins. I don't know why that came in my mind then. Uh, not <laughs> absorbed. That's the word absorbed. So he wouldn't get any more smells. So I thought, oh, well, that's a good idea. So I went up to Sainsbury's and I, I'm trying, of course, I'm trying to find one of these summer barbecues, aren't I? You know, in January or February, rather. <laughs> oh, oh, right. we don't have those yet, sir. Oh, no. They don't come out till the summer. And I thought, oh, I said, well, I thought as much. I said, I, I'm sure you also do something to get rid of the smells in fridges. And the bloke says, oh, uh, have you tried cleaning it? <laughs> I thought, how rude. How blooming rude. My fridge is clean. When it comes to food, incidentally, I did tell you my house is a little bit, you know, dusty and things like that. When it comes to food, no. The fridge is clean. The um, work surfaces are clean. Everything is clean in the kitchen bar the oven. And that's clean as well now because I've done it. Well, I've done it, as I say, I've done it <clears throat> partially as well as I can. But some of the burn on stuff, I'm having trouble getting that off. So I went to, uh, again while I was at Sainsbury's, um, I bought a very strong oven cleaner. But I get scared to use those because you read all the directions on the back. Uh, causes severe burns. If it gets in your eyes, get to a hospital quick and all this business. I thought I really don't want to use this. But what can you do? You've got to get it off. So up Sainsbury's, so he took me over to the um, cleaning section, and sure enough, there were um, a couple of those things. They're like a gel. I think they're like a gel. And you take the plastic bit off the top, and you put it in the fridge, and all the smells go in a few hours. Marvellous. How does that work, then? How does that, like, attract... How does it somehow attract the air in there or something? Very clever. So that was that. And I thought... Why is, why is it smelling like this? And, and anyway, I went to make a cup of tea and I picked the milk up. And I thought, that doesn't feel cold. Now, this was on a particularly cold day outside. And I know um, that if it's very, very cold, then you're supposed to turn the fridge down even further, aren't you? So it was already on number five. It goes up to number six. I'll put it up to number six. Right. Uh, and so I made my tea. And then when I poured the milk in, I noticed... Um, a, a couple of bits, like, floating on the top, which is a dead giveaway. Anyone who's a tea drinker will know that that means the milk is off or is very, very close to it. Or has... No, sorry. The milk is either very off or has just gone off. So I tried the tea. And I thought, no, it doesn't... It's, it's OK. It tastes all right. So I took that in the room. And then it comes to breakfast time. And I'd done my usual breakfast of blueberries. I haven't got any bananas at the moment. So I had blueberries, grapes and um, bran flakes. And I got the milk back out of the fridge, poured it on, went into the living room. I did also have another pint of milk in there that I'd bought a couple of days, uh, a day before. So there's, there's, there's one that's nearly finished, which was the one that was tasting a bit. Well, the one with the bits floating in the tea. And there's the other one. Um, so uh, I poured it over my breakfast, took it in the room, took a sip of tea, that was all right. Then I started eating the breakfast and I thought, oh, no, no, dear, this doesn't taste right. No, 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 no. Now, so I, I couldn't, I thought, no, I don't want to eat this, don't like it. Now, I'd only just put the milk on, do you know what I did then? <laughs> oh, you're going to die when I tell you this. I then went back into the kitchen, I thought, well, I'll get rid of that and do another breakfast. Did I throw it away? No. No, what I did is I got a sieve... <laughs> <laughs> and this does this did work actually. I got a sieve, chucked all the breakfast into the into the sieve, watched the milk <laughs> go down the drain, put it back in the bowl, opened the other milk and 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 put that on top. And I come back in the room, it tastes fine. <laughs> well, why waste it, dear? I didn't want to waste the bran flakes and the overpriced fruit. Why is fruit so expensive now? You know, they go, they bang on and on about us being, eating properly and all that with fruit and veg. Why is fruit so dear? Well, I can never understand what it applies to the blueberries. They seem to change enormously. Now, at the moment, just up the road, Sainsbury's, they're doing blueberries for £1.24 for, uh, I think, uh, about 150 grams, whatever that is, right? There are other times when they're £3 odd. Or three pounds ninety nine for the same size punnet. It's a liberty. That's what it is, dear. What with that and the Valentine? I told you about the Valentine's roses, didn't I? Up there last week, 
They wanted £40, dear. £40 for a bunch of roses. What a rip-off. I hope you didn't waste too much money on Valentine's Day. No one wasted any money on me. <laughs> Don't do it. It is such a rip-off. Too late now. I bet you did it, didn't you? I bet you went up the, you know, to save time, you went to the florist and ordered a bunch of flowers for 75 quid. Hundred odd dollars. You're mad. Mad, dear. So, um, where, where were we now? Oh, yes, yeah, so I had my breakfast and that was it. And I didn't think any more of it. Then I checked the fridge a couple of times and I thought, this is, this is still not cold. So I'm turning, turning the thermostat. I thought, well, I can only go up to number seven now, dear. So I put it up to number seven. Now, I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute, that used to click. You know, you know, when you turn the thermostat and it clicks, doesn't it? No click. So I turned it all the way down to the bottom. I looked at the little temperature thing and it said four degrees. OK. I turned it all the way down to naught and it clicked off and the light went off. Turned it on again and it clicked on again and immediately it came up as six degrees. I thought, well, that is too warm for a fridge. Anyway, I thought, well, you know, maybe there's that would be all right now. I've turned it on and off and I've put it right up to number seven and closed the door. There's also a super cool button on there. I didn't press that. I didn't think I, I don't think I've ever pressed it, to be honest. So that was that. Da, 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 went through the day, went to bed, got up the next morning. Next morning, I opened the door and I thought I'll have strawberries with my blueberries today. I picked up the strawberries while well, they were all going mouldy. They were growing and they they hadn't gone out of date. They were out of date, I think, the day after that day. And I thought well, there's something very wrong here. Once again, the milk felt warm and um, I thought this, this fridge is broken. Um, so I thought, oh, my God, more expense, dear. So I thought I'd try and push the super, fr super cool button. So I pushed the super cool button and immediately the fridge burst into life. Bzzz, it was going. I thought, ah, that might work. So I then had to chuck out all the strawberries. Um, I'd already chucked that milk away the day before. And what was the other thing? Oh, yes, I had two kind of... Well, they are ready meals, but they're not, if you see what I mean. They're like half a ready meal, where you've got your meat and something else in a packet with a, a plastic film over the top. Now, you see, if I buy something like that or a lasagna, then I will do vegetables with it. So it's like, hard, to me, to buy a lasagna in a packet, shove in the oven for 30 minutes, that is half a dinner. The other half is the vegetables you do. And I'm a great, I've always been a great believer in vegetables and fruit. Well, not always, not when I was a little boy, but um, more recently. So, um, uh, so that was the morning. Again, I had my breakfast, went swimming, this, that and the other. Uh, come back and I thought, well, I'll have that chicken thing that I bought from Marks and Spencer's the other day. So I've gone to pick it again. And I took the cardboard off. I noticed that the, the plastic film on the top was, was raised. It was like as if it was full of air. And I'm pretty sure that means it's, it's, there's something wrong with it. Anyway, um, again, um, I'm a believer in smelling things. So I, I, I just took back the plastic a little bit. Uh, and it actually it did smell. Uh, this, I, there was no strange smell to it at all. So I did cook it and I put it in the oven and I cooked it for, I think it said 20 minutes. Well, I left it in the oven for 40 just to kill anything that might have been in there. And again, I did some vegetables and I ate it and it seemed to be fine. But I was very wary of the chicken. I actually left most of the chicken and just ate the, the long pasta things, the little strings. What are they called? It's not spaghetti. You know those thick things? What are they called? Is it, it's a car, it's car... I don't know what it's called. It something. Um, so that was that. Um, the fridge, the little light went on and it was now down to two degrees. OK, so clearly by pushing that super cool button, that seems to have temporarily alleviated the situation. Um, so I, I rung up a friend, I think Richard in London, who's uh, sometimes watches or listens to the show. And he says, oh, no, your fridge, it sounds like your fridge has had it. Um, I said, I've got a lasagna in there. Uh, I said, and, and I said, that I've just had this chicken with a raised plastic he said oh you shouldn't have eaten that you should have just chucked that straight in the bin i said it's two pounds dear we can't be wasting two pounds can we 
He said, well, it's two pounds or be very sick for many days. Oh, I see what you mean. So that was it, really. Um, I thought maybe the fridge, fridge had sorted itself out now, so I let it do its thing. After a while, the super button, the super cool button, turns itself off. Went through the day, back to bed, up in the morning, went down to the fridge, four degrees again. Super button, off. I thought, well, that the fridge has had it. So um, I thought, well, uh, that's one thing, you know, you can't hang around for a fridge, can you? It's not like waiting for a new television or a new computer or something like that. You need a fridge. So I was straight on the um, internet. John Lewis, because they've got a very, very good service record here in the UK. It's a department store and their service record is second to none. It really is. I was listening to the radio and I've, I haven't actually bought anything from them before. Um, I do have a... A, a, a department store near me called Bentles and I've bought stuff from there before but I don't think they do fridges and freezers anymore uh, certainly they don't have any on, or I haven't didn't see any on display when I was in there the other day so I looked on the John Lewis website and found a, a suitable replacement the John Lewis they do their own brand of uh, fridges so I ordered one of those 233 pounds so that's about 400 dollars something around that uh, price I would guess and um, very good. And it will be coming oh, it's this w in a couple of days' time. How exciting is that? So they'll take the old one away. Now, before you start screaming and shouting at me, why didn't you try and get the old one repaired? Oh, I did. I did. Now, the repair, um, it's a... I, I, I'm never quite sure how to say the, uh, the name of the manufacturer. Meal. M-I-E-L-E. -E. Very good brand. And I looked on their website, and I do indeed do service call-outs, but the call-out charge was £97. And it seems a hell of a lot of money to me. Uh, the fridge itself is, and the freezer, they are both about 10 years old. OK, so not particularly new. But I'm a great, great person to have things repaired. Now, probably, I suppose... If I could find like a little repair shop and one could take it into the repair shop, then you avoid this call out. Charge. Why is it £97 to call someone out? It's just so, so dear. They don't want you to repair anything, do they? And, and in this day and age, right, when they're all moaning about people chucking too much away and, and, uh, and, and stuff like that, you would think... You would think that they, they, people at the top would try and make things so that you can repair them or that they can be repaired, you know, at a reasonable cost to the customer. So what would I consider a reasonable cost? Um, to have that repaired, including parts, 75 quid. I would have been happy to pay £75 for all, for, for all that, really. But £97, just for the call-out. It's too much, man. It really is too much. So that's why I didn't bother having it repaired. Now, uh, since ordering the fridge from John Lewis, uh, I've kind of decided that it was probably the thermostat that had gone wrong because it's not clicking when you turn it anymore. And actually, if I was able to get hold of the spare parts and able to get get to where it is situated, I could probably have fixed it myself. It is a relatively simple thing. I think it's just attached in three or four wires. And, of course, you know, you just put them in the same place as the old ones were. So I think I could have done that. But my difficulty would have been actually getting to the thermostat. How do you actually get to the thermostat? It's not always easy, is it? So that's it. So I've ordered a new one and it'll be here in a couple of days. Very, it is always exciting, isn't it? When, you, when you've got something about to come in the post. Huh? Doesn't matter what it is. It's just a, just a fridge. It's just a fridge. That's all it is. But it's, it's still exciting that, that a new item is to be delivered to my Mirable studio so that once again I can eat safely and coolly. Coolly? Uh, well, whatever. So that's on its way. The reason I chose John Lewis, as I say, is that their, their, their reputation for service is brilliant. We have here in the UK 
uh, 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 quite a few electrical retailers. I call them high, sc- high street retailers. But their reputation for service is, is a lot of it is diabolical. It really is. I mean, I'd love to sit, sit here and read you the names of these places. But on occasions uh, where I've had dealings with them, and it's just awful, they don't treat you like a customer at all. It's like you're doing them a favour for giving them the money. It's awful. Absolutely awful. I took something into one of them once, and um, uh, I can't I can't even remember what it was. It was years ago. Years ago, I said, oh, I've only had this two weeks, and it stopped working. Can I have a replacement, please? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, it need to be sent away for testing. Sent away? What do you mean sent away for testing? Well, you've had it two weeks now. I said, yes. I said, how long are they supposed to work? No, I wouldn't have done that. It's sent it away for testing. Sent away for testing. That's no good to me. Sent away for testing. I'm sure that's illegal, you know. I am. And since then, I've bought nothing else in there. So they cut their own blooming throats. This particular retailer is in a lot of trouble at the moment with a credit crunch and what have you. Okay? And they d- really don't do themselves any favours. Another time, uh, you know, I've got a, a couple of properties. And for one of the flats, I ordered a cooker. And this particular cooker, it was electric, right? And I always remember being in the, um, in the showroom and uh, this, this bloke selling me this thing. He didn't seem to be remotely interested in what he was selling. God knows how some of these kids make any commission. He, he wasn't interested at all, just typing in, couldn't wait to get the money, you know, and this sort of thing. And he said, do you want installation? I said, and I thought, well, it's, it's only an electric cooker, so, I mean, actually, it, it, it's, it's really easy to install an electric cooker. Don't let any electrician tell you otherwise. If everything's in place in the house, it is very easy to install an electric cooker. It's three wires, just like putting a plug on, except it's a big wire and it's on the wall, very thick wires. Of course, you must turn the electricity off first. Don't, don't, don't think, oh, uh, yeah, I, I'll be careful. No, it's not worth it. Just turn the electric off. I know it's a pain in the bum sometimes because you've got to go around the house and readjust all the time switches, haven't you? But, you know, turn the electric off. And uh, he says, oh, no, oh, for, oh, for the sake of, you know, a, a couple of quid. Yeah, yeah, go and have the installation. He said, right, that's £75. I said, just a minute. What did you say? It's £75 for installation. I said, I said, it's an electric one, not gas. He said, yes, £75. I said, you're having a laugh, aren't you? He said, no, that's what the price is. I said, it's three wires. I said, you've only got to attach three wires. He said, well, that's what it is. I said, well, I won't have the installation then. Thank you very much. Oh, well, we can do it half price. (laughs) I don't think so, sunshine. What a bloody rip-off, isn't it? What a rip-off. It really is. So I said, no. Uh, and a few data. Uh, when would you like it delivered? Uh, 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 we can do it. We can do it Thursday. I said, is that morning or afternoon? You know, you know what I'm going to say now, don't you? Oh, I can put morning or afternoon, but I can't guarantee it will be there sometime Thursday. Well, it's no good to me, is it? Anyway, so I agreed to having it, and that was it. And then th- this is a few years ago, and uh, the day came, and I'm sitting in the house. The doorbell rang. Got your cooker, okay. And these two scruffy urchins. This is a high street retailer. You would expect more. These scruffy urchins just came in and dropped this dropped this cooker in the in the hallway. Okay, there, there isn't any stairs in this particular flat. They just dropped it in the hallway. I still. Oh, uh, are you bringing it into the kitchen? No, you haven't paid for installation, have you? And how, how on earth do they expect return customers, some of these people? I don't know. Because I haven't bought anything from there since. I will not buy anything from there since. Not unless I absolutely have to. It's such a such terrible, terrible service. John Lewis are not like that. Okay? Now, um, speaking from experience, Bentles as well. I've bought stuff from Bentles before because they too have a very good... Um, customer service record and two men in, in green outfits come round you know what time would you like to deliver we can give you a two hour time slot brilliant 10 till 12 now John Lewis they've actually given me a four hour time slot 9 to 1 that's fine I've got no problem with that at all very pleased with that 
And these blokes from Bentles, uh, I think I, 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 when I was a settee I ordered from them, and 10 to 12 was my um, uh, window of window of opportunity, <laughs> was it? My, my window of delivery time. Half past 10, knock on the door. Hello, hello, sir. None of this mate. But I mean, I don't, I don't mind. How, I don't care how people talk. I really don't. You can throw in a few swear words now and again. That's OK. No problem. But it was just the general attitude towards me coming from these blokes. It was like I felt a value. I did feel like a valued customer. Knocked on the door. Hello, sir. Uh, we've got your city for delivery. Um, OK, boys, thanks very much. Um, if you could just um, bring it through there to the uh, living room. OK, sir, uh, we're we'll going to get it out of the lorry. So these two blokes, and they brought it in. Uh, and I said, would you like it? I'm always look after workmen. Would you like cups of tea? And I said, yes. And that was it. They said yes. So I made them tea and what have you. And uh, they brought this to tea in. They then removed all the packaging, took it away into their van, put the tea together, zipped it up and everything else. Where would you like it, sir? Oh, just over in the uh, in the corner there. OK, sir. And put it in there. Right, that's it. Is there anything else we can do for you while we're here? I thought, is that an offer? <laughs> I said, no, that's that's very good. Thank you very much, boys. Anything to sign? No, nothing to sign, sir. That's it then. Uh, give us a, just ring the um, uh, the customer services line if you have any problems at all. Good day to you. And that was it. Now that's what I call service. And I have gone back there several times since to purchase other items. I actually bought, funnily enough, I've actually bought the fridge and the freezer that I've got downstairs from Bentles as well. And it's the same thing. They, they move it into the position. And they, everything is done. The packaging is all taken away. And they plug it. Uh, no, they didn't plug it in. They said, OK, um, right, they're all in position. And they say to you, please don't plug them in for two hours because everything, all the fluid in the back has to settle or something. I'm not quite sure what all that's about. Um, so there we are. So my new fridge from John Lewis will be coming in just a couple of days' time. And as I say, uh, I'm sure the other one is repairable in all honesty, but um, uh, am I being lazy? Should I have had a go, really? Maybe I should have. Uh uh, they they actually remove the other one. There is a small fee for removing the old fridge, which, you, of course, you don't have to have that. If you can dispose of the fridge some way yourself, i.e. perhaps take it down the council tip or something like that, then you, you would, of course, have it done free, wouldn't you? Um, but um, they, they charge a very small £9. £9, which is nothing uh, to remove the old fridge. So I'm very happy for that. I shall tell you how that goes. I hope they send around nice men. We don't want Mingers coming round here delivering my goods. Thank you very much. <laughs> so that's the fridge story. A new fridge has been ordered. Now, um, since the ambulance uh, came a couple of weeks ago now, I told you about it on the last show, I have to say to you, the asthma has not been, has almost completely cleared again. But I don't think there's anything to do with the asthma, the, the, the ambulance guy coming around. I have been opening the windows every day and hoovering the entire house every day and frying the windows open for two hours. Yeah, OK, it's a bit cold, but I think it's been worth it because the, um, the, the, the asthma has almost completely subsided. I mean, it, it had been getting gradually worse with, with the cat coming into the house um, four or five puffs a day. Well... In this week, I've had, I think, two puffs the whole week. So clearly, yeah, there's the answer. And we knew that was the answer anyway, didn't we? Yeah. All right, there's an email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Do join in. My name's Chris Reardon. This is United Kingdom Talk, where it's email time, boys and girls. Your emails have been flooded. Oh, hang on a minute. I nearly forgot. I've got a parcel as well here. Shall we start with a parcel? Because that's been sitting there. Um, we Let's see, the thing is, when things come in from you, dear, dear friends and loyal listeners, and it's, I am always so appreciative that someone has bothered to send anything. Because we do have a postal address as well, uh, which I'll give you in a minute if you want to send in letters. Um, I don't ask you to send in parcels and and bits and pieces like that but you do and it is great i'm so grateful for for anything that comes in so we'll open this first and then i'll give you the postal address and then we'll do emails all right now this has come from mark who sent me that lovely i'm sure it was mark who sent me that lovely calendar last year do you remember 
Anyway, it's a, it's a big box. Look at this. Look at this, dear. Oh, let's open this and see what's in it. Oh. Oh, I can't get it open. Pull it out. Oh, 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 I can't get this open now. I shall use my letter opener from Cyprus. I've never actually been to Cyprus. Someone bought this for me. Years ago. Oh, I nearly stabbed myself in the heart then. We nearly did open heart surgery here on United Kingdom Talk. There we are. That's it. Get it open. I've no idea what this is. Ooh. Ooh. It's a T-shirt. Oh, Mark. I think that's just packaging. Let me just see. There's a packaging in the bottom there. Yes. Oh, and what have I dropped there? Hang on. I bet I know what this is. This would be one of his one of his calendars that he kindly sent sends. Right, first of all, let's have a look at the T-shirt. What have we got here? Oh, look at this. Yes. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, I like it. It's a T-shirt that says, Lonely fella looking for love. I love it. Lonely fella looking for love. <laughs> Do you think if I wear this tonight, um, I might get offers? If Cristiano Ronaldo was to see me in that, t in that T-shirt, would he, would he come, and come round and start talking to me? Eh? I don't know. Right, and I've got a tube here of something. Let me get the tube. It's a white and red T-shirt with lonely fella looking for love on it. Oh, that's nice, that is. Uh, I'm just trying to open the tube. One minute now. Oh, I can't get this open. One minute. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll lever it open. There we are. Oh. Oh, how lovely. It's two, two of our friend's calendars. Yes, it is definitely from Mark. He does... He makes things. And he's got his own website, which you can have a look at. Autumnlake.com Now, these calendars will be going up on my wall. I'm not going to put them up on the wall yet uh, until I've been decorated, OK? Because we are still waiting for a decorating date from my dear, dear niece and her boyfriend. Uh, the boyfriend's coming back because he goes away for work. He's coming back soon, so we should get a date out of him then, at which point I'll start, dis I'll start dismantling the studio. So we may have no shows for a week. I I'm not sure about that. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. It's it will probably be that I have a week off from shows because it will just become impossible, I think, to do it. Unless I set up in the other room and then it's you've got to take everything apart twice then, which is, oh, dear me. Anyway, uh, so I won't put them up yet. Yeah, one of them's like a cartoon thing because he, he draws cartoons... I'll give you the website in a second, all right? And the other one, let's have a look at the other one. I'll just put that up there. And the other one is, oh, pictures of um, ships. Oh, and poems. How lovely. Pictures of ships. And uh, poems there. And a calendar at the bottom. Because I never got that Cristiano Ronaldo calendar, you know. They'd run out in the shop. Ha! Probably someone else after him. And uh, it's got poems on here. First ship at the top, it says, Look off, dear love, across the shallow sands and mark yon meeting off the sun and the sea. How long they kiss in sight of all the lands are longer, longer we. Well, isn't that nice? There's, there's three poems altogether. Now in the sea's red vintage, melt, red vintage melts the sun as Egypt's red pearl dissolved in rosy wine, and Cleopatra nights drinks all. Tis done, love. Lay thine hand in mine. And then the one at the bottom. Come forth, sweet stars, and comfort heaven's heart. Glimmer ye waves around our unlighted sands. O night, divorce our sun and sky apart. Never our lips, our hands. Oh, it's what? Sorry, I beg your pardon. It's one poem, and it's by Sidney Lanier. And just three pictures of different ships. And the, the kind of the verse of the poem goes with the particular picture. So beautiful that. Thank you very much for those, Mark. And uh, if you want to look at some of his other work, it's www.autumnlake, A-U-T-U-M-N-L-A-K-E, autumnlake.com. Did you write that down? Go on, go and get a pen. I'll give it to you again. I'm going to give you the postal address as well, okay? 
www.autumnlake.com. That's the address. All right, boys and girls, I'll give you the... Uh, oh, I've, do you know, I've done it again, haven't I? Every time I show you something, I accidentally reveal the address. If you watch it on YouTube, uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't actually have seen that because I'll, I'll edit that out with the United Kingdom Talk logo. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid I did that before. OK, here comes the post address. If you want to send in a letter, it is Chris Reardon. United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L, R-G-42, 9-E-D. Here it comes again, Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L, R-G-42, 9-E-D, United Kingdom. And once again, the website, have a look at Mark's work. He does some uh, wonderful things there, autumnlake.com, autumnlake.com. Thank you very much, Mark. I shall put one immediately up in the kitchen and then uh, one here in the studio when, we, when we're finally decorated. OK, thank you, sir. Right, on to the emails again. Hello to Gemma in Spain. It's been so long, Gemma. Oh, where well, is he off to sunny Spain? El viva España. Gemma, Gemma, who came to visit me when we were doing Bingay. Do you know that must be, that's two years ago now, Gemma. Unbelievable, isn't it? Two years ago. Hi, Chris. It's been a long time, I know, but I haven't forgotten my promise to send you one of my favourite CDs. And she did indeed uh, send me a, a CD, so thank you for that, Gemma. This is some kind of Gregorian uh, chant, though it has some Renaissance reminiscences to my mind. I got it as a present for one of my students last year. The problem is we don't know the name of the group, which is a shame because I'd love to buy some stuff from them. They do deserve it. I'm sure you'll love it too if it reaches you this time. Yes, it has indeed reached me. Haven't listened to it yet, Gemma, but uh, I will definitely have a, a listen to that. Uh, something I heard the other day also was um, uh, a CD or, or, or a track of Ave Maria by The Priests, P-R-I-E-S-T-S, -S. OK, The Priests. And anyone who likes that religious type music, uh, you really want to have a listen. And they are real priests who have made CDs, or, or at least one CD, I assume, an album. All right, so have a look at The Priests doing Ave Maria. If you've got iTunes and you like that sort of thing, have a little look, it's beautiful. Oh, my word, it's, it's really beautiful. Gemma says, I'm into a lot of things this year. My classes, my PhD project, pilots, classes. It's, what, what is that, pilots? Is that where you, like, stand on one leg and things like that? I mean, I'd tip over, dear. I would tip over. Jogging or watch your knees with the jogging. I had to give up the jogging because of my knees, etc. And besides, I'm organising a trip to Dublin with my students next year. Oh, hello. I've never been to Ireland. I've always wanted to go to Ireland. If you ever go across the sea to Ireland, then maybe at the closing of the day. Oh, a beautiful country. Lovely people as well. But I'm happy being like that, she says, as in busy. Next uh, week, I'll take my students to the computers lab and show them how to download podcasts in English. Of course, your show will be highly recommended, so you might have more people listening. Lots of love from Gemma. Oh, thank you, Gemma. We could always do with a few, few more listeners, dear. One here, one there. It all adds up. It all adds up. Thank you, Gemma. And lovely to hear from you, my love. Please keep in contact, dear. You keep disappearing for months on end. But that's OK, because you always get back to me in the end. Now, um, talking of listeners, now I, I, I've never really been one for... Um, numbers and statistics and things like that. However, now and again, I do actually look at um, statistics and 
how many people perhaps have been watching or listening the show. Now, it's a bit difficult, really, because the show is on so many different platforms. Um, you've got the podcast. You've got the YouTube. You've got the current TV. You've got the blip TV um, and the various internet radio stations and uh, a couple of little FM ones that play it out. So it's very difficult to get an exact number. Now, I always... Uh, so I, I, I tend to just look at the podcast numbers. And I've been looking at those now, off and on now, you know, since I started in October in 2005. And gradually, very slowly, they kind of go up a little bit. And I just assumed there were... I haven't looked for a long time. 150, perhaps, people listen to the show. But roundabout, something like that. Um, and whenever I go on, I've been looking at the statistics that the, the website provides. And in, sure enough, it was like, you know, 130, 140, or so I thought. And I've been reading them wrong. And I was really surprised to learn just how many people now download this program. I've got the bang up to date ones in front of me. So far, February, this year, okay, and we're just into that, 3,795. Now, can I, if I can explain, that's not just one show. It's not, for example, 3,795 uh, have watched this particular show. The way it works, in the month of February so far, and we're, not even, we're just about halfway through it, in the month of February so far, out of all the shows I've ever made, 3,795 of them have been downloaded, and I'm just so shocked by that figure. If I go back to January, the numbers there are 9,836. So once again, all the shows since I've been doing them, okay, people have picked and choosed which shows they want to download, and the total of all those downloads is 9,836. And going back, December, 12,689. November, 14,000. 469. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I didn't go too far back. I went back as far as um, February last year. So I went back a year. The highest month was August in 2008 when 19,830 of my shows were downloaded in one month. I can't believe that. It's just astounding. And I, I, I only looked, I looked almost by accident. I just thought, you know, how do these stats actually work? I, I'd never really, you know, I've been doing the show nearly three years now, uh, October 2005, and I've never really looked. I don't want to get into the um, situation where I keep looking now at numbers because the numbers don't interest me. I don't, they really don't. I'm not, not very numerical. It always annoys me when these blooming accountants and that, or oh, how much is that, or 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 how many of those have you sold? Oh, for Christ's sake, you know, two toilet rolls have been used this week. Stop moaning. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So I'm not one for numbers, but it, it just has astounded me, the amount of people that um, have downloaded this show. And if you're one of them, and you've never found the time, or perhaps the need to write or email into the show, then... I'll thank you very much. It's just, just unbelievable. All right. So if you're out there, those of you that are out there that ne that never write, and I know there's a lot of people that that don't email. They don't want to. That that's okay. Doesn't matter. Thank you very much. I, I do appreciate your show. Uh, your your you're showing interest in this. Uh, the email address, just in case you want to, though, <laughs> is Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk i'm just so touched so touched by the uh, uh, amount there all right thank you on we go then hello to chris willis who now does a podcast as well called the rant it's the t-h-e dash rant r-a-n-t 
www.ghostbusters.co.uk. All right. Oh, I think that's the right one. Let me just check that. We don't want to get that wrong, dear. One minute. Duh. Oh, uh, uh, uh. I always like to check website addresses in case I've given out the wrong one. It could be a .com, couldn't it? You see, that's the thing. No, that's right. He's got. Uh, he's just got the one episode up there at the moment. All right. Once again, the rant dot mypodcast dot com. That's uh, his um, uh, where you can find his podcast. And uh, Chris has uh, uh, always listened to my shows as well. And he writes this: just finished listening to Saturday's show a couple of weeks ago, and I have a story that I thought I would share with you after hearing the email that you received from Jamie, who's in Milan in Italy. Now, you remember Jamie? He's just joined the show. OK, welcome along uh, again, Jamie. And Jamie is uh, uh, a lad who's in Milan in Italy. He's uh, gay, but hasn't told anyone yet. Firstly, may I say I completely agree with you when you say that all contact should be stopped to... E OK, the, the story here, if you missed that show, um, he was, he was uh, seeing someone, he was going out with someone, and that bloke has now um, stopped seeing him and has uh, decided that he's going out with girls now, all right? And it's just how, it, how it's turned out. Life is a funny thing, isn't it? You know, nothing... Nothing is written down, is it? Nothing can really be planned. You never know what's around the corner. You just never know what's going to happen next. Uh, and Chris says, Firstly, may I say I completely agree with you when you say that all contact should be stopped to ease the pain you go through after splitting up from somebody you care for very much. It's the hardest part, but always the beginning of the healing process, and it, it certainly is um, what tends to happen, I think in most cases, actually, that the person who does the, um, does the dumping, I suppose, the person who says, I don't want to see you anymore, always comes out with, but can we be friends? And it, it doesn't, I'm sorry, I, I don't think it works. I think in most cases it doesn't work. You have to have a clean break, no contact with that person whatsoever, no matter how much it hurts, OK? It's much worse to be with someone that you can't have. It really is. In time, the feelings go. And then perhaps in a couple of years' time, then maybe you can be friends with them again. But sometimes you can't. You have, to, you have to finish it off and that's it. Not finish them off. <laughs> finish off the relationship, all right? Chris says, anyway, back in late 2007, I got a text from someone that I'd previously spoken to on an internet website designed for meeting people. Uh, the site was called Face Party. Yes, I've heard of that one. We can't have chatted much, as when I got a text, it was out of the blue. I didn't know much about this person. Um, I use various sites across the internet to chat to people and sometimes meet up uh, with people I feel we have things in common. From the day of that text message and right through the next three or four months, we spoke every single day but never met. I wonder if this has happened to you. Have you been on the internet chat sites and perhaps met someone? How did it go? Do let us know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk as you can imagine, over this kind of period, it's very difficult not to get emotionally attached to someone. He only lived 30 minutes drive from me, but circumstances meant we never got to meet up, as he was always having issues at home. As this went on, I started to get increasingly frustrated, but could not make myself tell him that this is going nowhere. He then just vanished. A month later... He texted me saying he had to get away and went to Spain to see his family. I took the courage to tell him that he had hurt me by saying nothing. He has played with my emotions and I cannot sit here waiting for that moment for us to meet that will never come. He understood and I stopped contact. Isn't that funny? Someone who he's never met and he actually felt emotionally attached to him. There are... I mean, you must be so careful meeting anyone on the internet that you don't know. You really must. Only this week I got a text from out of the blue from him as he had a new phone and did not recognise my number. 
when I said who who was it, it started all over again. Every single day we text and he tells me his life is sorted out. I now live 200 miles from him, but he insists he's coming down to visit next weekend. Can you blame me for being very cautious of the whole situation? But even after a few days, I feel myself getting drawn back in. I don't know whether to believe him or whether he's just messing up with me again. Well, Chris, uh, I reiterate, you know, you should always be very careful with people you meet on the internet. Not just through, perhaps, physical violence or nastiness like that, but also, you could let someone into your house, you wouldn't know who they were, you're asleep and they go through your drawers and nick all your money. I'm not saying he would, I'm just pointing it out, could happen. You just don't know the person. Now, I, know th I think a lot of people hide behind their computers. You've only got to go on some of these awful forums. And the way, the way people talk about each other. Um, fortunately, I, I've had it on um, a couple of radio anorak websites where people would talk about my show and tell... And, and, and quite out in the open, say how rubbish it is and all that. No feeling at all for what the other person is feeling. I look at some of these sites and have seen the occasional message about me and I laugh and I think, you sad individuals, that you have to hide. These are things that you would never say to someone's face. They hide behind their computers, tapping away all day and all night, looking, nitpicking for faults. In my case, it's in one eye and out the other, but uh, other people, it, it does affect them. You've got to switch off and just look at these people as the, as the general idiots that they really are. Um, digital Spy, I think there's a couple of bits. It's either Digital Spy or Anorak Nation, somewhere on there that someone was a bit, little, little bit critical, critical of the show. And critics, what are critics? Critics are people who actually can't work can't make it, perhaps, in the entertainment world. They can't do the job, so they pull apart other people's work. And if you're clever, you close your eyes and you don't look, or you ignore, and that's what I do. Similarly, people on a lot of these internet dating sites are blatantly lying about their age, their looks, the whole thing. So they could also be lying about the fact that they might be a burglar. And there's some really dodgy characters out there, Chris. I, I don't know whether you should meet this person or not. He could have been just a bit mixed up in his head, you see, and now he's sorted himself out. The funny thing is you won't realise that until you meet him and then even then you might not work it out. I wouldn't take him back to your house. I would meet him outside, I don't know, where you go, McDonald's or something, or in a pub. But just keep your wits about you. Always keep your wits about you. <clears throat> uh, Chris says, from an outsider's point of view, Jamie, stop contact. Forget him and move on until such time when you feel you have no interest in him other than friends. And that, that will happen. Okay? Maybe that's what I should do with a guy I'm getting involved with or not getting involved with. Oh, how life is never simple, Chris. Best wishes, and that's from Chris in Kent. Life is not simple, mate. You know that. You know it's not simple. Dear me. Hello to Phil. Hello, Phil. Um, Phil is the young lad that does the YouTube videos, which I got I got his name wrong the other day. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash Fizza, S-A-P, F-I-Z-Z-A-S-A-P, youtube.com forward slash Fizzer, S-A-P, okay? Hi, Chris. I thought I should tell you about my granddad. He's in his 80s and he's been a brilliant person to look up to. When I was younger, he would teach me how to make delicious chips and would help me make toy trains with leftover rubbish. A lovely story this is. A few weeks back, we had a phone call and it was my nan. She was worried. My mum picked it up to hear my nan was in a right state. My granddad had collapsed upstairs. All of a sudden, 
the family's plans when it went into meltdown and getting him to the hospital was vital. My uncle lives in Sweden and he flew over as quickly as possible. It was one night when we were told he had cancer. He wouldn't make the night. All the great memories flashed back of him, but my church kept praying. The next morning, he was still alive. How, no one knows, but he was doing so well in hospital that we was moved to a home where people can look after him. Apparently, he's been telling stories to the older people. I have heard that he wants to go back to his house and live there again. The problem is that we all know that would be dangerous. He needs to have an eye kept on him. I don't know what's next. Thanks from uh, Fizzer, SAP. So, nice story there, isn't it? And it just goes to prove doctors are, are very, very careful people. Uh, very, very clever people, rather. They usually know what's going on and can sort you out of all sorts of situations. Sometimes they can't. They are not God. But sometimes, even when you think there's no more hope, it turns around just like that for no reason, doesn't it, eh? And for that we're grateful. The same with Joe's, Joe's mum as well, who seems to have turned a corner there. That's it from the show today. Um, <laughs> email's still waiting here, I'm afraid. They, w they will come up, I promise. I'll tell you what, we'll do another email catch-up programme on the next show. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. Thank you so much for watching and listening today. See you on the next show. From myself, Chris Reardon. Bye-bye now.